Making a program that will try to pinpoint why they're using drugs, <coughs> medical or recreational. Sometimes, you know, you get out of bed, your knees hurt, but you know, you go to the doctor, you might, they don't say nothing, anything wrong with you, but it's still pain, and you can't get rid of that pain, even though you're stretching, doing everything you need to. So, they might need to take weed or ibuprofen. I'm taking ibuprofen a lot during football season. Sometimes you can get addicted to ibuprofen and feels like that, and it's not a good thing. So I'm trying to find out, are they just doing this with their friends when they have to practice or are they doing this for a real reason? And I'm also trying to run to more help at a local boys and girls club for mentoring and guidance program. I've talked to one of my old coaches, because I'm not from here, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I talked to one of my old coaches back there, and he's an athletic director at school and the dean, and he said every every player he has, most of them have drug issues, and they do it all the time. They don't care if they get caught with it. They walk into school with it, and it's very difficult to try to like limit the drug use there. And he went to several boys and girls club, and they do it there also, and trying to do mentor programs more and I'm trying to help get more people to join and why is we taking players money and spots on teams and alcohol too because we and alcohol do they both drugs but you can't get kicked off the team or get 
wine for alcohol, even though you can still take it for decreasing pain. But alcohol more has more issues than we. You know, we can have depression, all that stuff. We can drunk driving, crashes. Sometimes domestic domestic abuse. We might you can still have problems with weed, get kicked on it, and but most of the time you you're still like in a state where you're not doing anything and you're just sitting down and just thinking. subject, um, you covered a wide range right there. So I counted six different solutions. You want stricter fines for PED on a professional level. Um, you don't want marijuana to be banned drug, uh, as a drug on a professional yeah. level. You want to look at the drug testing at a younger age because habits develop earlier than high school? Oh uh, yeah, sometimes like middle school because I allow Friends that my middle school used to do a lot with. Right. You want to stop drug abuse overall or limit it, decrease mm -hmm. it. Um, you want to have more people join board or clubs and be active in it, right, to help that. And then your last one is basically uh, you compared marijuana and alcohol, so basically you want to help change the marijuana, marijuana laws. Yeah, because the NFL, like, like, you can get beer at games and stuff, you know. Sure. I don't know most players get well, like, state, Each state has different yeah. laws, and at the federal level, it's still an illegal as a drug. So that's a lot of different things you want to do. Do you think that those are accomplishable? Uh, I know I can't like go to a big company, big organization like the Bill Royalty Gate, so I'm trying to do like the mentoring stuff first. Okay. Get that out of the way, because that's more important than trying to change the bill right now. Cool. Okay. Good. That's what I wanted to know because what is your next step? How are you going to make an impact at a, at a local level, something that can touch everybody's lives here, and then from there you could take that the next step would be something a little farther on, rather than saying I'm going to do all these things I'm going to do them now, and that's what I was, I'm, I'm interested in doing. So just walk us down that timeline with your big goal at the end of it, and then your small steps on how you're going to get there. Okay. Are you familiar with the story of uh, Ricky Williams? Yeah. So, you know, for those who don't know, Ricky Williams was a star running back. I think it was the University of Texas, but the NFL. <laughs> but he liked to smoke weed. Mm -hmm. And he got suspended, I think, more than once. And he just said, I think I want to smoke weed, and, you know, you want to suspend me fine. You know, and so <clears throat> now I think we look at marijuana a lot differently now that we do that. But, and that's, I think, part of your point. I like the fact that <clears throat> you have, in your solution slide, uh, that you're not I'm glad to hear you pointed out the NFL problem. You said you wanted to change it, but you really want to start these mentoring and guidance programs, which are, which have been proven to be very effective because they're one on one or one at small groups. So it's true. I'm curious, do you get tested every year as a high school player? Uh, I've heard, I haven't got tested yet. But it's a random thing? Yes, random. So, so you're subject to testing. So. Any, so you could be tested at any time as a as a player in your IHSA school, school rules and so forth. Um, now you mentioned the boys and girls clubs, which I think probably were dominant probably in Milwaukee where you live, in the yeah. area where you live. Of course, there are no boys and girls clubs in Fishers. There are in Nobles, though. So how would you go about setting up these programs in a more local Fishers? Uh, I'll probably go to the Y instead of boys and girls clubs. Okay. We don't have any. Why is there a football program? Uh, I have one other question. You talked about the younger kids using drugs, and you, you use personal experience, which is probably the best you know, way you can possibly uh, make an argument for that, and you use some other evidence. What kind of drugs are kids using in middle school? I mean, they're a so panoply of them. What, what type are they specifically using? Well, mostly, mostly we are do you think that's performance enhancing to use those drugs? Maybe cocaine, probably because you can't feel anything, it's hyped up all the time. But weed, I think it's more like pain. Yeah. 
Yeah, just one quick aside to something you mentioned. My uh, my brother worked at a hotel here in town, and an NFL team from out of town was staying there when they were playing the Colts. He said, I can't count how many runs I made to the liquor store. Because those guys, as you mentioned, are not tested for alcohol, and that's the only way they can kill the pain. And if you're playing in the NFL and you play 16 regular season games, you're going to be in pain. So that's a very good observation. So you mentioned the mentor program. What would that consist of, like, like guidance? Uh, or, like, also, guidance, uh, tutoring aspect, too. Sometimes we struggle in school, and they're like, okay, I'm just going to talk about drugs, and don't care about like more. And, you know, sometimes it's mostly mentoring and getting like that big picture thing and quality figures sometimes, like coaches. Do you think that will have like a ripple effect to fix the solution? Uh, fix something. Okay. In your list of, of solutions, there, there's a contradictory message in mentoring programs to keep kids away from drugs and changing NFL policy to allow drugs, or yeah. marijuana specifically. Yeah. As an aside, in a, in a professional presentation, please call it marijuana, not weed. Okay. <laughs> um, it kind of speaks to credibility, which yeah. is, it, it probably has nothing to do with your credibility, but it just, uh, because it's so informal, right? So. I think the marijuana debate right now, I mean, obviously, like Larry said, it's way more of a thing today than it was when Ricky Williams was, you know, just high as a kite, getting suspended all the time. Uh, but it's still something that a lot of people don't take seriously, and they especially don't take it seriously, as my brother says, when all of the hippies without shoes are protesting on the state lawn and not at work, yeah. right? So. Um, just be mindful, right? If you want, if you want someone to take something seriously, you have you have to treat it seriously, right? Sorry, that, go ahead. That, that's fine. You 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 emphasized my point. Oh, <laughs> chewing the gum probably doesn't help either. <laughs> um, a, anyway, your those contradictory messages are are difficult, um, and I I think with this discussion and, and your responses to thing, it sounds like the youth mentoring is probably nearer to you, okay? That, that sound, that's what I hear more passion in, in you on, rather than changing NFL policy. Um, but you have to pick one and concentrate on it to, to make a project like this work. Um, something you could do at a local level is realistic. Changing the NFL policy on a multi-billion dollar industry, it's not realistic. Um, so. I, you know, as, as some of this discussion, if you want to make that a timeline, cool. But for opportunity project, you got to pick something you, you can bite. And, and if local mentoring is, is what speaks to you, choose it, move forward. Cut. Mm -hmm. Anything else for Taj? Thank you. Thank you.